you're listening to The Coffee Hour, I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for your support of The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. We have a great story to share of a local school teaching some a great life skill, I think. Uh, we're talking about American Sign Language today in a local high school here in St. Louis, uh, where students are now able to learn American Sign Language during their day, which is a wonderful thing. Joining us first is Philan Peters-Baku, American Sign Language and a theater arts teacher at Lutheran High School South in St. Louis. Thanks for joining us today on the Coffee Hour. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. So what what began your interest in American Sign Language? I was incredibly blessed to grow up in Texas, and our church had a deaf ministry. It was brand new, and my parents were very interested. They decided to learn to sign. My mother eventually became an interpreter for the deaf. Through that process, the pastor of the deaf ministry came to my parents knowing that we had all dabbled a bit in the language. Um, There was a a young lady who was a ward of the state. She was in foster care and lived at the state school for the deaf. It was Christmas, the school was shutting down and she had nowhere to go. We were in the process of becoming a foster family. And so we went through um, emergency services, were certified and she came to spend the Christmas break with us. It was literally trial by fire. She came into the home. My mom was the only one who could fluently communicate and they put her in my bedroom. So it was learn or sit in silence for two weeks. Um, My parents tucked us into bed, said goodnight, shut the door. And as far as I knew, that was all they knew. Unbeknownst to them, we had schemed a plan that she was going to teach me as much as she possibly could with flashlights under the sheet, and that's where it all began. So you were learning sign language after bedtime, (laughs) quietly. It was quietly as you could, possibly, yeah. (laughs) Were there giggles coming from your room while you're trying to learn? So many giggles. It was so much fun, and she was incredibly gracious. Um, And to this day, she is a part of my life. Tell us about how that relationship grew as you were able to learn to communicate more, as you were able to learn the language. How did that, that relationship grow with your new sister in a sense absolutely my sister she came home every holiday as the school was taking breaks or there were long weekends we felt like there was no need for her to be at the school and she just became an instant part of our family that two-week period was a, a really a blessing in disguise for all of us we learned a new language we gained a new family member and she has been a part of our lives, well, almost my entire life. I was six years old when that started. I now have um, two nieces, three great nieces, a great nephew, a brother-in-law who is also profoundly deaf, and it is simply our family. Mm -hmm. What did that relationship mean for her? How How did you, how have you seen that uh, that relationship that you built at a young age um, grow and, and and impact her life in a positive way? I think the biggest part of it was there was a family that she could communicate with. Her biological family um, did not learn to sign, and there was really not a, a firm foundation for relationship with her biological family until well after she graduated from college. They were able to bring the family back together and reconcile, and slowly language um, was developed there, but we were the family that could communicate. So there were very positive things that were going on in both of our lives. Um, She learned how to do all those girly things, you know, get her hair done. We took her to her first beauty appointment, bought her first pair of high heels, all of those things that were first in her life, she got to do with my family and my parents and my mom. And it was a lot of fun because there was 
enough love in the family to go around, even for people who weren't family members. And so we inherited not only her, but all of her friends from the school. It wasn't just her that came home for the holidays. She would bring her friends home. And there were friends in our area that she knew. And so our family literally grew just enormously. And really, we were able to become a part of this community that would seem very foreign to most people. But there was a language there. There were no barriers. And that was the most important thing. The barriers were simply gone and the sky was the limit. What other opportunities were open or bridges were built because, uh, because of this new language that your family had welcomed through learning American Sign Language? Your mom, you, it sounds like your whole family learning American Sign Language. What other opportunities were there? What other bridges were built? There were a lot of opportunities. I can remember getting my first job at the mall at a retail store and people would come in, hearing impaired people would come in. And in most cases, you know, they just did their thing as most people do when you don't speak the same language, but they would come in and I would see them out of the corner of my eye and I would know that they were, um, that they were deaf. And so I immediately would communicate. The opportunity for me to minister to people came very quickly through this. I can say that I have unfortunately interpreted more funerals than I have weddings simply because I was willing to step into a role that there was, there was a need and I, I jumped in to fill it. We had a, a, a close friend of the family um, through work at one point who lost a family member. I went to the funeral service and his grandparents were there unbeknownst to any of us, they were deaf. There were no interpreters at their grandson's funeral. I, I realized what was going on and asked them if they wanted me to, to take care of this, to interpret for them. And they were overwhelmed. And of course, it was an opportunity to minister to a, another family in a time of need. And those things just, they continue to happen. We are blessed in our family that we have ministered through school, college, elementary school, in, in so many different ways. The first time I interpreted was a movie. I was eight years old. It was a little crazy. And I interpreted Tron for my sister. Um, so all of these opportunities just kind of popped into being. And, you know, you see them and you jump into them. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, the maybe misconceptions or people that or things that people may not um understand or even think about when it comes to learning ASL and understanding uh, how that language makes a difference for people in the deaf community? I think a lot of people think it's just really hard. It's really complicated. But what um, we fail to remember is anytime you are given an opportunity to communicate, you just, you jump into it. We have um, so many different locations where Signing will come in very handy, whether it's at a restaurant or at a grocery store. You just, I think any chance you get to communicate is, is a blessing and an opportunity to, to open a door and walk through it. Tell us about bringing American Sign Language to Lutheran South High School here in St. Louis. I am so excited that this is an opportunity that I have been given. We started talking about what can be done. I, I was approached in the spring while we were all still in quarantine about the school and things that were going on. And being a theater person, I was asked, so what else can you do? And I said, well, um, I, I'm, I'm a trained interpreter for the deaf. I have this language base. We could do a simple worship class. Let's call it a theater arts program. Let's include it in theater arts. Let's do signs for worship. And they said, sounds like fun. Let's do it. The class filled up so quickly and was received very well. We're now in the process of 
setting up ASL as a foreign language, as a language credit within the foreign language department now, so that the kids can get credit for foreign language for college acceptance. So it's, yeah. it's been very exciting. It's been very well received. That's great. Tell us about the, uh, how the students are, um, you, you said the class filled up. How are the students reacting and responding to this opportunity to learn American Sign Language and uh, to connect with others who this is their first language? It is honestly the quietest class in the house. We are, um, I, I've had people, lots of people walk into the room just like, what, what's happening? There's no noise. These are the most well-behaved kids. And I said, I say they're, they're simply really focused. They have to pay attention to what's going on. We have classes that are totally silent. I don't speak at all. And they just sink or swim. All of them are swimming fabulously. They've picked up the language beautifully. Some of the students have found that they struggle with spoken languages. And so being a tactile language, being able to move their bodies and make sense of things in a different way has really helped them out a lot. Some of our students are looking to go into ministry. They're looking to go into education. And this is just a, a different way to look at what we're doing. Um, communication skills at any level in any way are, are really needed. My prayer is that they are able to see a need in the community and then go meet it. That is my, my biggest wish for them. I have had several students say they notice interpreters more now. They see sign language happening more. They're more aware that there is a community out there that speaks a new language. We're used to hearing languages. It happens everywhere we go. But seeing a new language, it's very different. And they're starting to recognize where the needs are. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. This is such a great opportunity for these students to be able to do that. Are there resources um, that, that people can access if they're interested in learning sign language and aren't a student at Lutheran Absolutely. South? Absolutely. Absolutely. Deaf Incorporated here locally in St. Louis is a great resource. You can Google American Sign Language online. There are so many websites that are designed specifically to teach the language. Local libraries teach the language. Local churches teach the language. It's really accessible. It's the fourth most common language spoken in America. Wow. It's out there. We just have to go get it. Well, Philan, thank you so much for joining us. We get to talk to a couple of your students yeah. next, which is very exciting. Thanks so much for, for sharing your story and for telling us all about this great opportunity with uh, learning American Sign Language at Lutheran High School South in St. Louis. Thanks for being our guest on The Coffee Hour. Thanks so much. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We have been sharing with you about a wonderful program at Lutheran South High School here in St. Louis, the American Sign Language program that is new to Lutheran South and having an opportunity to speak with their instructor. Now we get to talk with some of the students and I'm so excited to get to talk with students from Lutheran South. We always have wonderful students to chat with. And so joining us today is Morgan. She's a freshman and Lillian, also a freshman. Morgan, welcome to the coffee hour. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Lillian, welcome to the coffee hour. Thank you for having me. So let's start with you, Lillian. Why were you interested in taking American Sign Language at Lutheran South? What you got? What, what hooked you? Why were you interested? 
Well, when we were looking at the course recommendation sheet, um, it was very different from all the other electives. So I think that's why it stood out to me. Um, it was just something different that I never learned, and I thought it would be something cool to try out. Morgan, what about you? Yeah, so my mom actually works in the deaf field, and I have a brother who's deaf, so I thought that learning the language would be different. And just like Lillian said, it's something I'd never really seen before offered at a school. Usually, like, the go-to languages are Spanish and French or German, so I just thought that it'd be something interesting to try out. Mm -hmm. Now, Morgan, you have experience a little bit uh, in the deaf community. Have, have you seen uh, American Sign Language used a lot in your experience? I haven't actually because my brother has a cochlear implant which allows him to hear but just knowing that there's a lot of other kids out there who don't have cochlear implants and that's how their only way of communication. Lillian what about you have you seen American Sign Language uh, make a difference or, or being used by someone in, in a deaf community? Um, I haven't I was taught it in the ABCs in elementary school but I have never been able to experience it. So let's talk about what you are learning this year in American Sign Language class. Um, Morgan, what are some of the things that you've learned so far in the class? We've learned a lot of just the core words that you use in like a main conversation. So just so you know how to have like a simple basic conversation, like what your favorite animal is, where you were born, your favorite sports. We've learned finger spelling and we have word sheets where we gloss and write how to remember the words, just vocabulary words. And right now we're learning some songs, which is really cool. Lillian, anything to add to that? Um, she kind of summed it up. Um, we've just learned we can have basic conversations with each other. Um, we've actually been able to have part of the class be a non-talking class. So Miss Malone just signs the whole time and we just don't speak, which has been really cool to actually kind of experience it from that point of view. Are you finding that you're able to use uh, ASL outside of class? Are you communicating with one another outside of class with ASL? Yeah, I have been actually with some of my friends in class. Um, and once my teacher is like, stop communicating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Morgan? Are you using it outside of class too? Yes, I tell my mom a lot of the things we learn and then we confuse my dad because he's just sitting there and he doesn't know what we're saying, which is honestly kind of cool because I'm going on vacation with my friend over spring break and she's also in the class with me. So we were kind of saying to each other, we can just sign to each other and our parents will have no idea what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected benefits. Uh, <laughs> now you talked about learning songs. That's that sounds like a really cool thing. How how do you go about learning a song in sign language, Morgan? So basically, you look at like a sentence per se in the song, and you can just use like three signs to kind of get across your point. You know, the main goal is just for the person to understand the message that you're trying to portray. So we can just use two signs like per line and you really got to just show your emotion because you know they can't hear the music so you're portraying like how strong of a message is with like your actions and how big your signs are so hmm. Lillian how have how has learning songs gone for you have you found uh, that you've enjoyed learning to sign songs um, I've definitely enjoyed learning songs. Um, like Morgan said, we kind of have two ways of learning them, um, the way Morgan mentioned, and we've learned the Lord's Prayer. So when we did that song, we did it word by word, which was really cool because mm -hmm. it was definitely like a slowed down version. Um, but then some of the other songs we've done are very quick, and so Best. it's <laughs> super interesting to try to sign with them along to the song. From your perspective, um, we'll start with Morgan, how would you describe uh, American Sign Language as a language? Um, when, you're, when you're thinking of something, like someone says something in English and you want to think of how to sign that, how would you describe that process of um, interpreting or translating in your mind? Hmm, that's kind of a complicated <laughs> question. <laughs> I haven't really thought about that, to be honest. So, for example, if you said, um, you know, if someone said, uh, I, I want to go out to a restaurant, uh, I want to go to a restaurant for dinner, um, how would you sign that? Now, I granted, we're on radio, so again, or podcast <laughs> yeah. here, so you... I can't really express that. But how would you describe how you would sign that? Would you sign each of those words or would you 
um, would you go about it differently? Yeah, so it's a really simple language, honestly. There can be like, honestly, just for to say I want to go to a restaurant, you could probably just sign I want eat or mm-hmm. I want food. And I think the point would be made. Yeah, hmm. sometimes um, you don't even have to sign want. You could just say like eat. I restaurant. Um, and for signs, you don't know like, for words you don't know your signs to, um, you just finger spell to the person. So mm-hmm. that's kind mm-hmm. of how to get the sentence across. Mm-hmm. Lillian, what would you say has been most challenging so far in American Sign Language class? Um, I think receiving sentences and f- especially finger spelling um, because many people sign differently. So one of the things we do every day is we kind of switch up where we're seating. So you don't get used to seeing one person sign. You can see many people sign because many people have different ways of signing, like whether they use smaller hand motions or they're more enthusiastic. And so um, it's kind of the hardest part has just been whenever we do finger spelling quizzes, (laughs) trying to pay attention to the words when he's going really quick. Yeah. Uh, Morgan, anything to add to that? What's been most challenging? I agree with what she said, honestly, just, kind of picking up every sign because sometimes you'll ask them to repeat it and then you pay attention to a sign you miss, but then you miss another sign. So just trying to pay attention to every single thing that they're going over can kind of be hard because if you don't know three signs, then you really don't know the sentence at all. (laughs) Now learning, learning something like this, that's, that's very different from anything else that you, you, you've been able to learn. Uh, It's a very different language. Have you heard, uh, have you learned anything about uh, yourself, uh, the way that you learn uh, or or the the way that you take in information? Have you learned anything about yourself in this, in this process of learning American sign language? Uh, We'll start with Lillian. Um, Definitely. So through Lutheran South, I've learned that I'm a kinesthetic learner, which means I learned with my hands. So Foreign language has always been hard for me, but when I got introduced to sign language, it was like perfect because you use your hands to communicate. So it's definitely been easier for me to pick up, um, and I've wanted to go home and practice it and learn it some more. Mm -hmm. Morgan, what about you? Yeah, definitely. It's really changed my perspective on how I view school because, you know, sometimes there's not talking at all. So you can't just be looking off into space and expect to get the what like what she's teaching. You really have to be watching the whole time and be aware and alert of what's going on or you're going to miss the lesson. <laughs> yeah. So you you really have to be watching and, and visually attentive to mm-hmm. what's happening. You definitely. miss a whole lot. <laughs> What have you found most enjoyable um, about this class, about American Sign Language? Uh, Let's start with uh, Morgan. Definitely just having fun with my friends, you know, we're all learning the language together. So everyone's really patient with each other and just learning together and communicating like, hey, what's this sign? And then they'll tell you and then you kind of just laugh together. That's really fun. And I love watching videos of like, signing and music that they do because just watching other people do that it's a really cool experience to like see Lillian what have you found most enjoyable um like Morgan said it's been very I found that it's one of the one of my most comfortable classes so I can feel like I I feel like I can be myself in that class um Miss Huan the teacher who teaches it also makes the fun very um interactive which is fun because we'll be on our feet um dancing we had a dance party the disco once. ball we had a disco ball so we're always having fun in that class it's never boring and we get play though <laughs> so we're you're one semester into this class right you, yeah. you've completed one semester no um, and, no actually this is our first semester learning oh, this is your first semester yeah, we've only been okay. in the class for six weeks Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. So this is your first semester in the class. And mm-hmm. but you've already learned it sounds like you've learned quite a bit. You're already <laughs> yeah. able to communicate outside of class. All right. Have you had a moment where uh you made a mistake and it was rather embarrassing <laughs> when you were you were signing or you misunderstood or you, you signed something incorrectly and it was did you have an oops moment that okay. was really embarrassing? Yes, I have. On the t- like we have quizzes and if she says a sign and I have no idea what it means, I'll just write something that I think it is. And then when she's going over the grading and then she says the actual word, I'm like, I feel so stupid that I put that answer. <laughs> 
You, Lillian? Um, I don't think I've had a moment yet where I've signed something incorrectly, but definitely what Morgan said. Sometimes I put crazy answers if I don't know the sign. <laughs> How are you hoping to use this skill uh, in the future, looking forward uh, to, to what you're, you're planning on doing over the next uh, several years? Have, have, has this in, influenced at all what you're thinking of, of doing uh, in the future, uh, Lillian? Um, I want to become a nurse when I grow up. And so I think this has definitely opened my eyes to um, there's always people with, you know, different languages who need help. And so being able to help them through this language, I think would be a really cool thing to do. And what about you, Morgan? Yeah, I think it would be really cool. Maybe just the more that I learn next year when I'm in ASLB, maybe to take it to church and be able to sign to the worship songs so that those who like just even watching it, you know, it's a really intriguing language, even if you aren't deaf. Like if I was at church and I saw an interpreter, I'd, my eyes would probably be locked on them the whole time. Like just stuff like that and like doing songs. I think that's a really cool thing. Morgan, Lillian, it has been uh, just great learning about your experience in American Sign Language class at Lutheran South High School. I am so glad that you uh, have the opportunity to take the, this class this year and you're learning so much and that you're already putting it to use. That's just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Morgan, thanks so much for being our guest today on The Coffee Hour. No problem. Thank you. Lillian, thanks so much for joining us on The Coffee Hour. It was great to chat with you. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golfe. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.